This is Io, one of the four largest moons of Jupiter. A terrifying, inhospitable world. It's got huge lakes of molten lava, bigger than an average city. There are hundreds of volcanic eruptions that could dwarf a skyscraper. Oh, and its surface is constantly ripped apart by the gravitational force of Jupiter itself. Yeah, Io is an- You're sending me there, aren't you? Hey, I'm not done with the introduction. Can you wait a second? Oh yeah, sure, go ahead. So yeah, not a place that's likely to get a five-star review on TripAdvisor. I mean, could you even spend five seconds on Io? Here it comes. Well, luckily you don't need to, because we're sending our team member Chase to die on, I mean, explore this fiery hellscape. Sounds great. Fiery hellscape, almost certain death. What's not to like? Before you worry about what's waiting for you on Io's surface, first you'd need to figure out how to get there. Thanks to Jupiter's elliptical orbit, the distance between it and Earth is constantly changing. Even when it's closest to us, Jupiter is still 588 million kilometers away. It took NASA's New Horizons spacecraft one year, one month, and nine days to get there. And that's the fastest anyone, or more like anything, has ever made the trip. Only? One year is nothing for this trip. And New Horizons was an interplanetary space probe that didn't carry any humans on board. With all the extra stuff like life support systems and food supplies weighing the ship down, this trip would take a lot longer. You'd be looking at two and a half years or so. Well, unless you're traveling at light speed, in which case it would take a speedy 33 minutes. Oh, okay, great. This ship travels at light speed, right, Rico? Assumption incorrect. I, I don't understand. Does it go at light speed? Negative. I'm not, I'm not following you. This ship does not travel at light speed. No way I'm dying on this moon. So what if it's hot and volcanic and can crush me at any second? This time, I'm coming prepared. I know a place where I can get exactly the gear I need. This place is so epic, so awesome, only a few people know of it. Now we're talking. I got this fire proximity suit over here to get close to the volcanoes. This bad boy's good for up to 1,000 degrees. I strongly advise against it. According to my calculations, fire proximity Yeah, 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 yeah. Nobody asked you, Rico. Just make yourself useful and like, I don't know, set a course to Io or something. Oh, watch out, Chase, it's a volcano. Ah! Did you know that Jupiter has anywhere between 80 and 95 moons? You'd think there'd be a specific number, but no. Scientists are still counting them. Seems like they have a lot of time on their hands. Just like me. I'm gonna guess, that's Io, finally. Correct, we arrived into the orbit of Io. <sighs> cool. Yo everyone, finally made it to the orbit of Io. I am beyond stoked. <laughs> what are we waiting for, Rico? Land this puppy. Running pre-landing calculations. Okay, well, neither of those look promising. Landing on Io would be tough. I mean, even if you got down to the surface in one piece, it won't be a very smooth landing. You see, Jupiter's magnetic field is extremely powerful, much more powerful than Earth's magnetic field. 
And Io is only 422,000 kilometers away from Jupiter. That means Jupiter's enormous magnetosphere constantly rubs Io, and not in a gentle way. What the hell is that? That's Io. Well, parts of it anyway. Every second, Jupiter strips off literally a ton of material from Io. All that material then follows Io in its orbit around Jupiter. Here, the gas giant charges Io's stripped particles with radiation and transforms this particle cloud into plasma. Scientists call this a plasma torus, but what it really is is a cloud of intense radiation in the shape of a donut. Sounds like my kind of donut. <laughs> some people like an old-fashioned glaze, some people like a classic chocolate with sprinkles. Me? I prefer an intense cloud of radiation. Mmm, Taurus. Uh, Rico, by the way, this, this fire proximity suit is resistant to radiation, right? Negative. I don't get it. What do you mean? I mean, no. Fire proximity suit is not suitable for environment with high radiation. Your chances of survival are 0.02%. Great, what does RICO even stand for? A really encouraging, caring, omnibot. Encouraging starts with an E. Shut up, starts with an S. All right, RICO doesn't recommend me using this fire proximity suit like it's not good for radiation or something. But guess what? I only need to spend five seconds on IO to complete my mission. And this suit has gotten me killed. Like, too many times, okay? This time, I plan to survive. Landing sequence initiated. Well, good luck making it to that constantly changing surface. Io's orbit cuts right across Jupiter's magnetic lines of force, and that basically turns Io into one massive ball-shaped electric generator with a serious amount of lightning in its upper atmosphere. Um, Rico? Ah, this is crazy! I wish someone had shown me a simulation so I knew what to expect! And so here you are, on the surface of Io, the most volcanically active world in our entire solar system. Yeah, you're going to run into a lot of volcanoes, hundreds of them. And these volcanoes are extremely active. Many of them shoot fountains of lava, dozens of kilometers into the air. This place sucks. Ugh. Yikes, that was a rough landing. And what's up with all these volcanoes? I've never seen anything like it. Literally, I have never seen anything like this. These are due to a constant gravitational pull. And it's not just because the biggest planet in the solar system happens to be right next door. Io's neighboring moons, Europa and Ganymede, are also pulling on it. Guys, I landed on Io, but uh, there was a problem. Um, not gonna lie, it wasn't a smooth landing, but like Io has all these volcanoes and like lava lakes everywhere. There's all these tidal forces pulling and pulling on this thing. The surface of the moon is constantly changing. So honestly, guys, get in the comments, but like don't be too harsh on Rico for his like awful, awful calculations. Like seriously, the, the worst trash bag calculations I've ever seen. Oh, Rico, you were here the whole time? Anyways, got to change into my fire something suit. Get out there. Got to go fast. This ship is sinking. Warning. Temperature reading at 1,200 degrees Celsius. Io is a cold moon with average surface temperatures of minus 130 degrees Celsius. But around its countless volcanoes, the temperature can get as high as 1,600 degrees Celsius. What you really need is a good space helmet. And make sure those air filtration systems are working. The atmosphere of Io is primarily made out of sulfur, which isn't great if you're a fan of breathing. Mm, I do love breathing, but I also love this suit. It's so shiny. It's giving disco. Feel like you could spend a lot more than five seconds here? Yeah, <clears throat> yeah looks, uh, looks like it. I, uh, uh, 
What's the challenge for me over here? Sulfur. The gas that is not recommended for breathing. It makes your voice deeper. Yeah, the thing is, you can't survive more than a minute on this moon. Definitely not in that outfit. After just 30 seconds without proper protection from radiation and extreme temperatures, and without a good amount of oxygen to breathe, you'd lose consciousness. Your organs would shut down one after another, and one or two minutes later, you'd be gone. Just like Chase over here. Where should we send him next? How about the deepest depths of the Earth's oceans? Well, that's his story. For another What If. <laughs>